Are we about to see Tony Stewart sell off his racing assets? On Monday, it became official after a summer full of rumors, Tony Stewart has officially sold his All-Star Circuit of Champions Sprint Car Tour to Kyle Larson and Brad Sweet and their High Limit Series. The two series will be unified underneath that High Limit Racing banner and give Flow Racing a legitimate contender to compete with the world of outlaws. The bigger story about this, though, is Tony Stewart about to disinvest from his racing investments. That being his sprint car teams, the teams that he owns, the racetracks, everything like that. Was this just the beginning? So what all does Tony Stewart own? He's like the working man's Roger Penske, right? He might not have all the teams in World Endurance Championship and IMSA and IndyCar, NASCAR and Xfinity and all the other things, but he does have a pretty vast racing portfolio when you take a look at it. Of course, he co-owns Stuart Haas Racing with Gene Haas. That includes four NASCAR Cup Series teams and two Xfinity Series teams. He also owns Tony Stewart Racing, which fields Two teams in the NHRA, one in Top Fuel and one in Funny Car, one of those cars his wife drives. They also field a sprint car in the World of Outlaws for Donnie Schatz. They used to field another sprint car as well for Tony Stewart. We'll get more to that in a second. He also owns the SRX Series, the Superstar Racing Experience, which he's had since 2021. We'll see again what the future of that is in a moment. He also owns Eldora Speedway in Ohio, as well as co-owns Paducah and Macon as well. So you're probably wondering why would Tony Stewart even consider selling off all of these assets, right? I think it's honestly the same reason why Kyle Busch just sold off KBM. If somebody's going to drop a check in front of you and it looks pretty good, you're just going to take that money and go with it because you have other priorities in life. Of course, Kyle Busch has a family now, his kids racing, and maybe he just doesn't want to put up with the day-to-day -day of owning a team anymore. I think Tony Stewart might fall in that same category now. He just got married within the last couple of years to Leah Pruitt. He openly talked on the Dale Jr. download earlier this year about wanting to have kids, which is an absurd thing. I never thought we'd see Tony Stewart having a kid, let alone past the age of 50. That sounds exhausting. So credit to him if he's going to do it. I honestly just kind of assumed he would do like the Al Pacino approach, being like, ah, I'll give you what you need. I can't do any of this, so I'm just too tired. Um, but he does seem like he still has a lot of energy. Either way, I do think that's playing a big factor into why he got rid of the All-Star Circuit of Champions, because he's just not invested in that anymore. And why I think that he could potentially disinvest out of the NASCAR side of things. I don't think he'll ever sell off Eldora, let's be honest. That seems to be like his prized possession, and he puts a lot of time, effort, and money into making that the premier dirt track facility in the country. And then you have his NHRA teams, not getting rid of those as long as his wife drives for him. He's never going to get rid of his sprint car team, right, as long as Donnie Schatz wants to race. It will be interesting to see what happens with that car once Donnie Schatz does decide to retire. Do they find another young kid to put in there, or does that team just go away? But Tony Stewart not being involved in sprint car racing would be very odd. And then, of course, you have the Superstar Racing Experience, SRX, and what the future of that is. They just finished up their third season uh, this past summer, and they're heading into their fourth season next year on ESPN. And uh, by all accounts, well, Tony Stewart and company will be back once again. But when you look at it, would he sell off that racing series, that asset, everything like that? Honestly, yes. I think that that series was purposely built with the idea in mind that a private equity group or a media group will come along at some point and want to buy that series. And that makes total sense, right? This was an investment for Tony to build something up and then to sell it off. Think like Rob Deerdeck in that really bad skateboard league that he put together that nobody ever watches anymore. It's kind of like that in a sense. And I think that's what ultimately we'll end up see happening here. And he's going to cash out on that. But when you take a look at all the other things that he's involved in, he hasn't been in a sprint car since April of 2021. So having a dirt team makes sense as long, like I said, as long as Donnie Schatz wants to race. But when Donnie retires, I think that might be the end of Tony Stewart racing, at least on the 410 sprint car side on a full-time basis. Who knows? Maybe they come back and do... Uh, you know, one off here and there. Tony's been racing full time in the top alcohol class in NHRA this year. He's done well. And that's where his sole focus is, right? His wife races in NHRA. He's racing now also as well, uh, just down in the lower category because hopping right into a nitro top fuel car is just insanity. You're not going to want to do that, but he's racing full time. So he has all this on his plate, and when, while he's doing all of that, he's not at the NASCAR track. He's not really with the NASCAR team. 
I've seen a lot of fans blame Stuart Haas's struggles recently on Tony Stewart not being at the racetrack because somehow Tony Stewart being there would make them put better setups on the car and engineer the cars better. It wouldn't. It's not going to do anything. He's just there for moral support and to walk up and down pit road and, you know, cosplay as Chip Ganassi just without the plumpness. It's not going to make the cars run any better. And I see a lot of fans being like, why isn't he at the NASCAR track? Well, probably because the person he sleeps with is running drag races on the NHRA side, and that's where he's going to be. He'd rather hang out with her than he would hang out with Chase Briscoe or Ryan Priest. And you would all pick the same as well. It's just what it comes down to. It's more of a family thing for him to be over there. So not being at the NASCAR track isn't why the team's struggling. The team's struggling because they've just not been able to adjust with the times. That's a race-winning team. That's a championship-winning organization over there. And it's just like everything else that happens in NASCAR. Everything comes in waves, right? We'll see Joe Gibbs Racing win 19 races one year, and then they'll come back the next year and win three or four. And then you'll see Hendrick do the same thing, and then they lag and fall off, and then they come back up. We've seen Roush be the highest of highs, the lowest of lows, and now they're kind of coming back around. Stuart Haas is just in that dip right now, and eventually they'll come back up. But that's just kind of what racing is in a sense. So will we ever see Tony Stewart completely disinvest out of all of his racing ventures? I don't think we'll ever see him completely get out of racing. That just goes completely against everything that Tony Stewart stands for. If Tony Stewart gets out of all racing altogether, the state of Indiana is not going to know how to handle that. They're going to have to send a wellness check on him. It's going to be a whole thing. We can't have that happen. Will he ever disinvest out of NASCAR? I don't think he wants to go out running as poorly as they are. Granted, if he sells his portion of the team, assuming it's 50%, he's looking at about a $90 million payday right now just in charters alone. So that's pretty tempting, especially if you're going to potentially have a kid or two. You're like, well, you know, we could set him up pretty well. I do think that we could see Stuart Haas Racing run out the final season of their contract with Ford and then potentially switch over to Chevy in 2025, potentially team back up with Hendrick Motorsports, at least on the engine side and maybe a little bit of the technical side and see what they can get done there. Downsizing from four cars to three cars, or potentially even two cars, does make a lot of sense as well because he could sell off a charter, Gene could sell off a charter, they both walk away with 40 to $50 million. That doesn't sound too bad while continuing on with their team. I do think that we could see some sort of restructuring for him on the NASCAR side in the near future. He's never going to sell off Eldora. Paducah and Macon, of course, probably don't take up too much of his time. I don't see those going anywhere uh, anytime soon. SRX, to me, could be on the auction block at some point for somebody to come along if they write a check big enough for him there. He just sold off the All-Star Circuit of Champions, never selling off the NHRA teams, and potentially we'll see what happens with his sprint car team once Donnie Schatz retires. But Tony Stewart, you know, has a big portfolio He's also focused on drag racing. He's also focused on his wife and the life and everything else that they might be doing. Don't expect to see Tony Stewart at the NASCAR track anytime soon, though. So, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.